name is Barbara Melhart and I'm from the Department of Molecular Pharmacology of the University of Groningen. Today's date is March 30th, 2020, and this is a recorded class for the course Pathology and Immunology for First Year Pharmacy Students. I originally gave this class on March 6th and I re-recorded it for a complete set of online lectures. Um, this particular class will be about cellular alarms and help from the bone marrow. Uh, in a previous class we talked about um, the um, t local tissue resident immune cells that help out the innate immune responses when uh, something is trying to enter our bodies. Um, and this class will be about the alarm system used and the help from the bone marrow that they can get when they are being overwhelmed. So we talked about um, signals that induce phagocytosis by tissue resonant immune cells uh, and these um, receptors uh, can also be used as cellular alarm systems. They don't only uh, induce phagocytosis, they also uh, activate the cells and make the cells produce cytokines um, that can tell other cells to do something. Um, so innate immune cells, um, how do they know to, how to respond? It's because of those pattern recognition receptors that recognize either pathogen associated molecular patterns, so PAMs, or damage associated molecular patterns or DAMs. So it's just not just infections that activate uh, immune cells, but also when there's damage within the tissue because of a non-infectious event, then also the immune system needs to uh, react uh, to that damage. And uh, specific patterns that, that are released with damage can also activate uh, immune cells. So what are pathogen-associated molecular patterns? Those are molecules that are not present normally in our own bodies and therefore are recognized as foreign by the immune system. And that could be RNA or DNA from viruses or um, proteins or carbohydrates that are present on the outside of bacteria <coughs> or of fungi or of um, parasites that uh, are not present on um, cells of our own body, such as uh, flagellin, for instance, or LPS on the outside of uh, bacteria, or uh, beta-glycans, uh, GPI anchors. Those are all things that are not present on our cells and therefore are recognized by the immune cells as foreign. Damage-associated molecular patterns are a bit more difficult to uh, um, envisage as being seen as foreign by the immune system. Um, but the immune system, of course, only sees um, cells that are non-damaged. So it only sees uh, proteins and things expressed on the cell membrane of cells. If those cells become damaged, then uh, the content of the cell will spill out and this is not normally seen by the immune system. So things like RNA and DNA and ATP would normally not be seen by the immune system. So if the immune system sees this, it knows that something was damaged and there is a response needed. Um, also injured tissues have, uh, have uh, specific carbohydrates like heparin, sulfates and hyaluronic hyaluronin that um, the immune system normally doesn't, sees, doesn't see and becomes activated against. Also endogenous uh, retroviruses can produce uh, proteins or compounds that um, can activate the immune system. Um, so what are pattern recognition receptors? That, that do not induce um, direct phagocytosis, but actually alarm the um, cells. Um, and the most well-known ones are the toll-like receptors. And uh, they got this name because they were first discovered uh, by a German researcher in um, Drosophila flies. And um, he really liked working on them, so he called them toll which is the German word for fun. Um, so these, uh, 
receptors in Drosophila were called uh, toll receptors. And then uh, similar receptors were uh, discovered on uh, mammalian cells, and that's why they were called toll-like receptors. So we have a lot of them. And we have uh, toll-like receptors on the outside of cells, and we have toll-like receptors inside cells. And that's because the danger is not only coming from outside, it can also come from within. So you can be attacked by bacteria or parasites or yeasts, and those need to be recognized by these tool-like receptors. But you can also be infected by a virus or an intercellular bacterium, and that needs to be recognized as well. So that is recognized by tool-like receptors that are present in the, uh, inside the cell, in the cytosol and the endosomes. So what happens when these toll-like receptors recognize something? Well, then they uh, um, start to signal inside the cell. So the toll-like receptor then um, recruits adapter proteins that can activate two main pathways. The first main pathway is the NF-kappa-B pathway that will lead to the expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines and that will lead to acute inflammation and simulation of adaptive immunity. Or, in the case of infection with a virus, um, it activates interferon regulatory factors, IRFs, that will lead to the production of type 1 interferon, so interferon alpha and beta. And these lead to an antiviral state. Well, how does that work? Uh, production of these uh, interferons by infected cells is not uh, for the infected cell itself, that cell is lost. It's to tell its neighbors that they should um, increase their antiviral um, defenses. So they're being produced after uh, activation of toll-like receptors in the infected cell then the virus-infected cell starts producing type 1 interference, then an uninfected cell will recognize these type 1 interference, and it will start um, increasing its antiviral defenses by inhibition of protein synthesis. So uh, the, the uh, viral particles cannot be made. It will increase the um, expression of RNases that can degrade viral RNA, and it will inhibit viral gene expression and virion assembly. And therefore, it's difficult for a virus to propagate and uh, infect other cells. So interferon alpha and beta upregulate antiviral uh, mechanisms in healthy cells. So when they, um, these um, uh, alarm systems cannot, together with the tissue resident immune cells cannot um, have, don't have the best, uh, don't have a proper response anymore. Uh, when these are overwhelmed and they need more help, they can get help from tissue, from uh, bone marrow derived cells. <coughs> so they make a call to the bone marrow and they tell the bone marrow to come. So what is in the bone marrow? Um, those are neutrophils, eosinophils and monocytes that uh, we're going to discuss now. So neutrophils are the ones that uh, come in first. They, uh, they are very fast and we have a lot of neutrophils circulating in our blood. And when they're needed, they immediately go out of the blood and help out with immune responses. They're very good at phagocytosing microorganism uh, like bacteria and fungi. Um, but they can also exocytose granules with um, toxic uh, substances for these uh, microorganisms. And another thing they can do is then they can extrude their DNA uh, and uh, make a trap to catch and immobilize microorganisms. Because DNA is very sticky, so if they uh, throw it out of the cell, they sort of make a net uh, to catch microorganisms. And that's um, shown uh, here, these neutrophil traps. Um, when a neutrophil senses that there are uh, bacteria around, um, the neutrophil normally has this nice uh, segmented uh, nucleus, 
it will round up this nucleus and then the, the nuclear membrane will disappear uh, and then the DNA can be thrown out of the cell and this sticky DNA will then immobilize the uh, microbes that are crawling around here. And here I have a movie showing you how um, these uh, neutrophils actually do this in real life. The, um, here you see the uh, nuclei that are nicely segmented and then they become more rounded and then the green stuff is the DNA that is thrown out of the cells. I'll show it again. Here again, segmented uh, nucleus that will round up and then in the end will uh, disappear and the DNA will be thrown out of the cell. Eosinophil are uh, another uh, type of granulocyte that can help out with immune defenses, but um, these cells are called in when um, there's uh, uh, something else happening, namely when there's an infection with parasites. Parasites are usually too big to eat, so the neutrophils are not much use here. Um, and eosinophils are, are better at fighting uh, big parasites because uh, they're filled up with uh, granules filled with toxic substances uh, and what they can do is they can throw out these uh, toxic substances they can exocytose these granules uh, and then these will attack the parasite so the parasite will be killed um, by um, these extracellular um, toxic molecules. Of course uh, you'll get collateral damage then um, because uh, these, um, these things that are thrown out out of, the, out of the cell do not discriminate. They don't know that they should just attack the parasite. They'll also attack healthy tissue and then you get inflammation and inflammation has been discussed more um, in classes by uh, Leonie Belliers. Um, but what happens is that you get swelling through edema, redness, an increase of the temperature to make uh, everybody work a little bit harder and of course it hurts a little bit. Um, and um, that needs to be cleared. You need to clear all those dead cells um, and um, all the uh, dead bacteria and dead cell, uh, dead neutrophils. So that's when the monocytes come in. Monocytes can also help with phagocytosis and killing of microorganisms, but they can also eat dead cells. So all the neutrophils that have died and are, have made these traps, they can be eaten by monocytes. So they start cleaning up, uh, which is a first step to healthy tissue again. So here you can see the faces in, uh, in the innate immune response is uh, first you get alarm signals of tissue resident immune cells uh, and they start uh, the first uh, fight. They uh, start eating microorganisms for instance. When they think um, they need more help you get infiltration of neutrophils. Uh, of course then it becomes a bit messy and you need infiltration of monocytes to help out with uh, repair and then you get upregulation um, of uh, tissue repair and downregulation of inflammation by uh, tissue resident immune cells. Important in uh, repair are uh, macrophages. Um, either macrophages that are tissue resident or macrophages that developed from monocytes. So um, their first job is of course to uh, prevent an infection from happening. So uh, they, they first uh, can turn into um, cells that help out uh, against the infection. 
uh, and that is based on the um, recognition of these pattern recognition receptors. When uh, toll-like receptors, for instance, recognize uh, a bacterium, then macrophages can turn into M1, or classically activated macrophages, that uh, are lean and mean killing machines. They have my microbia, microbia, mm, antimicrobial actions. They can phagocytose and kill bacteria and fungi, but that will cause inflammation. And to repair all the damage that they do, uh, they can also turn into repair promoting uh, macrophages and that is based on signals from the tissue. If the tissue says, okay, the infection is gone, but we have lots of damage now, you have to start um, repairing things, then the tissue will produce cytokines that will tell the macrophage to turn into an alternatively activated macrophage or an M2 macrophage. And these M2 macrophages uh, make pro-repair um, mediators. So uh, they make anti-inflammatory cytokines that promote uh, wound healing and uh, scar tissue uh, in the area of the damage.